Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. This is Linen. I hope everybody appreciates that this is Linen. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Michael Preisner and Abby Martin from Empire Files. Mm. Michael's uh, podcast is called... Eyes Left. Eyes Left. Everybody check that out. Um, I wanted to do this real quick because we've been showing you that the, um, the Manafort uh, convictions and his prosecution have nothing to do with uh, what Mueller's investigation is supposed to be looking into, which is Russian collusion uh, and at meddling in our election. And so Manafort's crimes all happened before he was even with Donald Trump. So people are saying, well, Jimmy, he's doing that. They're, they're, they're prosecuting Manafort, so he'll turn, he'll flip. That's not how you get someone to flip. You don't, after they're guilty, you got nothing on them anymore. <laughs> so that you don't, you <laughs> threaten to prosecute someone to get them to flip. Or you give them immunity, and that's how you get them to flip. You don't charge them and then prosecute them, then find them guilty, and then go, hey, you want to play? Because that's too late. <laughs> so that's not what's happening in the Manafort case. And that's just not what, that's not what's happening. Uh, but what is that, see now what is happening Trump's chief financial officer is a guy named uh, Alan Weisselberg. He also worked for Trump's old man, and he handles his finances in every aspect of his business, right? And so uh, this is from The Hill. It says, a grim seven days for President Trump and his allies was capped off on Friday by news that Alan Weisselberg, the chief financial officer of the Trump organization, had been granted immunity by, by prosecutors. The immunity deal is said to involve only Weisberg's testimony against the president's former lawyer, Michael Cohen. So this is them trying to get Trump. Uh, by the way, that's them trying to get Weisselberger to flip. That, that, that's, a, that's what that is. And so he has immunity, but it seems narrow. It seems only when it comes to the payoff that Cohen was giving, Trump's personal lawyer was giving to the uh, the porn star and the Playboy uh, model. So um, still, uh, this guy, let's, uh, let's, let's assume the worst case scenario, that he confirms what Cohen has said, that Trump ordered him to pay these people off in a, in a way that violates campaign finance. Um, what do you, what, what, first, do you think that, again, they, they have to impeach him? People keep, I've, I've always been told that you can't charge a sitting president with a crime which, uh, because it's too disruptive to the business of the nation. You have to impeach him first. Now, people are saying that's not true. But anyway, I don't think this, again, this paying off of a Playboy model or somebody for a blowjob is not going to lead to an impeachment for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Because let's remember what happened to Bill Clinton and all the lefties defended him. It was an investigation that was investigating a land deal, uh, Whitewater. And then it ended up a couple years later, and we're talking about uh, what the definition of is is and who got a blowjob in the Oval Office. And they impeached him for lying about a blowjob. So now they're going to impeach Trump for lying about a blowjob, too. That's not going to happen. I'm just telling you it's not. That's how it looks to the, to the whole country, especially half of it. So it's not, that's not gonna, this is not going to take Trump down. What do you think? I think it's pretty interesting, like you said. I mean, for this to be the big smoking gun with the whole Russiagate investigation right. is just What's sad. Because you see people are just gleefully happy on CNN, MSNBC. They're like, we got it, guys. And it's like, what? You got what? Like, this, is, this has nothing to do with Russiagate. So aside from that, this penalty... You're not going to go to jail for it. So this is a big pipe dream of people saying we want to see Donald Trump rotting in a prison cell. That's not going to happen. These people don't serve prison <laughs> sentences. They don't no. serve time. And if he gets found guilty of, of violating campaign finance laws, that's a fine. That's literally mm -hmm. a fine. And that's, I think, what the best we're going to see. And yeah, even if he did commit a felony, typically... Um, or, or technically, I mean, um, the Republicans have to go through proceedings. Yes, and we know that the Senate and Congress are stacked with Republicans. They keep talking about this blue wave. They're even saying a blue tsunami now. I don't know why they're invoking a natural disaster to now say that they're going to take over. But the, mathematically, it's not going to happen. So I just don't see where this is going. It seems like a total pipe dream. I, I agree with you. People say this. They say it's, it, uh, it's not a civil case anymore. Because they, if they can prove that Trump violated this willingly, that's when it goes to a criminal. That's what that's what I've read. That's what the things I, 
again, it, they're just it's not going to happen, Mike. Yeah, well, I mean, it has a bigger purpose, you know, and it's um, you know, it's it's, it's good to zoom out a little bit and see kind of what a larger strategy is. I mean, you know that throughout history, any time there's any kind of mass progressive social movement in this country, the Democratic Party tries to co-opt it and then channel it into more acceptable avenues. And so, you know, the establishment didn't want Trump in office. That's why all of the top Fortune 500 CEOs donated to Hillary Clinton and not Donald Trump, because there was an acknowledgement that, like George W. Bush, he was going to be a magnet for political struggle and resistance. And so as soon as Trump wins, the Democratic Party had to find a way to channel all of the spontaneous grass grassroots energy that was going to start confronting the Trump administration on a, on a grassroots independent basis and find a way to channel it into acceptable establishment politics. And Russiagate has, has, has accomplished that. And so all these huge, they, they love these headlines coming out. They love these big stories, so-called breakthroughs and smoking guns, because it not only, you know, does their kind of, you know, petty attempt to try to get rid of Trump, but it also sucks in all the energy and, and consciousness of people that would actually be drawn to, to other po polls politically in the country in the struggle against Trump. So it's just what they do every time the Democrats trying to co-opt a movement against Trump into this this bogus Russiagate thing instead of the other. Avenues. So again, this is what we call normal expected corruption. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. this is not special to Trump. This is this is again this is if you put a special prosecutor on anybody in Washington D.C., you're going to find these kinds of crimes. And just like when they call it Manafort with not being registered as a foreign agent, no, nobody is in <laughs> Washington D.C. correctly registers until you get caught, and then they would typically let people uh, retroactively go and pay the fine and do it, and nobody goes to jail. So, so it's a big club, and we ain't in it. And and apparently, uh, some people don't want Trump in it. And so even though he's doing the bidding of the 1% and the establishment, uh, there's still a big group of people who, uh, and some neocons who want him out because he threatens to be non-interventionist. And his friendship with Russia is not a good thing for them, for their military industrial complex. That's, that's all that is, right? I, 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 there's, well, I mean, it serves lots of, uh, again, like I've said before, it serves lots of purposes, Russiagate. One of them is to keep us spending $700 plus billion dollars a year in the military, right? Yeah, I think he just makes empire less palatable. And, and there's different factions of the establishment that have lost power. You know, when, when it comes to Trump as an administration, there's these radical evangelicals and, and outliers who have been deemed too crazy over the past two administrations to really have power. And these people are just freaking out. They want to gain a foothold and they want to actually maintain control over, you know, the he he U.S. hegemony over the world, even though our, Trump is acting as de facto arms salesman in chief. He's on the phone making deals mm -hmm. and really kind of an arm of the defense contractors at this point. But it's still not good enough for these people who want to be in control of everything. Yeah. Well, we'll keep an eye on this. We'll see what... I, 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 I assume the reason why they gave him immunity is because he will confirm what Michael Cohen has said about Trump. And so then uh, now we're going to argue for, uh, I'm going to guess, months and months about whether the Republican Congress should... Uh, well, we'll see what happens in the midterms. But if it stays Republican, the big argument will be, can the Democrats shame the Republicans into having an impeachment hearing because we caught him red-handed committing a felony? That's what they're going to say. I, it's just so fucking stupid. <laughs> and it, it's just, please, get on with the business. It, while, while everybody's doing this garbage... While everyone's doing this, both parties are getting together to spend $717 mm -hmm. billion dollars on bombs. While we still don't have clean water in Flint, 30 million people don't have health care. Nobody can afford college. Half the country's poor or low income. 50% of all wage earners are in less than $30,000. And none of this is going to help any of that. None of this. This is all political theater by the 1% to keep you distracted into thinking that if we just could get Trump in jail or if we could just get uh, a, a, a war with Iran or Russia or Syria, hey, all your problems will be over. Iran, Russia, Syria, they have nothing to do with your life. Nothing <laughs> at whatsoever. No effect on your life. You know what does have an effect on your life? Uh, the effect that Goldman Sachs has on our electoral system. The effect that Eli Lilly, uh, uh, Exxon Mobil, Lockheed Martin, those are the people who are controlling our government. Those are the people we should look out for. This is all theater, and they can find this on anybody. That's why they get rid of the special prosecutor after Bill Clinton. Started with a land deal, ended up with lying about a blowjob. Here we are starting with a, a, a collusion with the Russian government, and we're already at a blowjob less than two years later. <laughs> we're already there. That's what this is. And that's how people see it, because that's what it is. 
Thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed. Even if you think you are, you're probably not. It only takes a second to check. And then you have to ring that bell so they send you a notification when we drop a new video. Otherwise, they won't tell you when we drop new videos. And if you like our show, please help support it. Become a patron. We give you hours of bonus material every week and we give a live stream we do a live stream every saturday at 2 p.m pacific time when you could ask us questions and we answer them back thanks for your support mm -hmm.